Uh, well, anyway, we want to turn attention to another important uh, issue in West Asia, and that is the recent elections, local elections in Turkey, which, of course, have some implications for the broader political scene there, which I think, as anyone who's following knows, has huge implications for the Middle East, for the war in Ukraine, for many different things, including for the Turkish working class. So we are very happy to be joined for the show to talk a little bit about this election by Neil Chenar, who's a central executive committee member of the Turkish Communist Party. And Neil, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, it's really a pleasure to have you here. Uh, as you may know, there was a lot of headlines here in the U.S. Uh, the day after the election, and it was being presented as this huge, major defeat for, for Erdogan, for his party, the AKP. Uh, and I'm curious, you know, how you look at that. I mean, was it a big for, a defeat for them? Is it a shift in the balance of forces? Uh, how are you looking at that kind of top line of the result? Yes, yes. Um, firstly, AKP suffered a huge loss of votes in the last election, and uh, CHP came to the fore in many cities and districts that traditionally seem to belong to right-wing politics. And for a very long, for a very long time, uh, Erdogan and AKP appeared to have power that could successfully survive the elections, at least in terms of voter support. So yes, the elections were a big defeat for Erdogan uh, after this picture, and uh, it's a defeat for AKP. And it's also true that there are changes in the balance of powers, at least in the political arena. But uh, from our perspective, uh, the balance of powers has a meaning beyond the initiatives of individuals and parties in bourgeois politics. Uh, so we think that the balance of powers must be seen from the side of working class uh, and it must have a clear uh, class content. Uh, that's why for us, what is important is that uh, what kind of game the capitalist class is setting up and uh, which center of gravity the working classes and the revolutionary movement holds. Uh, I, I, I want to look into this in a little more uh, detail because... This problem, that is the phenomenon of making sense of shifts in bourgeois politics, uh, or more precisely, the phenomenon of getting excited about some changes in bourgeois politics, uh, is not a problem to, uh, specific to Turkey. Uh, I think you'll remember, too, how joyfully Joe Biden was welcomed when he became president. Uh, even in Turkey, uh, there were leftists who commented that we were entering a better era after Trump's uh, presidency. Uh, anyway, that's that's why we uh, felt the need to make a warning in our first statement uh, on the latest elections. And that's why we stated that this outcome of elections is a false spring. Uh, yes, after long periods of power uh, and seemingly permanent governments, uh, slightest change brings excitement. Uh, we, we, we do not uh, deny this fact. But we have to say that this is not a spring weather, so to say. Uh, what is important for us is whether revolutionary politics has become stronger or not, and uh, whether the crisis experienced by the capitalist class have opened up space uh, for a revolutionary program. The picture that emerged uh, in the last elections shows that uh, this is not the case at all. Uh, also, it shows that the capitalist class is simply playing a game and is thinking of avoiding the heavy burden that will be placed on the working classes uh, in this way. Uh, that's why in this picture we see not a spring, but a false spring. Uh, but, uh, of course, you, you may ask what has changed then. Uh, for this, I need to explain uh, how the surprising election result uh, came about in the first place. Uh, first of all, uh, we left behind one of the most unexciting and dull elections uh, in the Turkey's history. I must say it's a very strange but important uh, that such an unexpected picture emerged from such an unexciting elections. Uh, yes, no one expected such a result. Uh, both the AKP and the opposition party, CHP members, uh, were somewhat surprised by uh, this result. That's why the idea that the elections result where a major defeat was widely accepted, not only in the international media, but also in Turkey. Because everyone in Turkey knows that CHP and other opposition parties performed 
uh, very poorly in the previous elections and after. Uh, CHP became increasingly right wing uh, and showed an unconvincing performance. And uh, AKP made good use of this unreliable and con- unconvincing image of the uh, opposition parties. Uh, of course, this doesn't mean that the uh, AKP is working better and making good election preparations. But uh, thanks to the uh, to such an opposition, uh, he had the opportunity to play the stability card. Uh, because in the previous elections, uh, large segments of society in Turkey turned towards the stability shield, so to speak. Uh, after the economic difficulties, uh, a chaotic world... Uh, an earthquake and the AKP used exactly this to close a very difficult election ahead. Uh, But the last elections coincided with a period when it was accepted that the AKP government would uh, continue for a while. In other words, the pressure pressure for stability in society has somehow eased. Uh, But the anger and feeling of Uh, insecurity created uh, by the high cost of living became increasingly dominant because the bitter pill was put into the meal by Mehmet Şimşek, the head of economy in Turkey. Uh, The most affected by this austerity uh, policies were minimum wage earners earners and retirees and uh, small tradesmen. Uh, So it's clearly seen that uh, the reaction votes against AKP Uh, root in such a class agenda and be capital evaluated this uh, in two ways actually uh, on the one on the one hand they had the opportunity to complain about current policies as, as if they were not the main cause of the high cost of living uh, with the AKP winning in the uh, 2023 elections they have a government that will take the chestnuts out of the fire so to speak Uh, but on the other hand, they made preparations for the transition to post-Erdogan uh, era. They provided tremendous media support and financial resources to some politicians, ex- especially Ekrem İmamoğlu. Uh, by tampering with the tensions within AKP, they paved the way for the uh, alternative political Islamist uh, forces. In short, they did whatever was necessary for so-called smooth transition in Turkish politics. Uh, the latest election results show that the big capital is successful in setting up their game in this respect. And I think uh, we need to mention about Ekrem İmamoğlu at this point. İmamoğlu has become a politician that has been studied step by step since at least uh, 2019 elections and in which big capital has invested heavily on him. Uh, and he's, uh, İmamoğlu is no different from other politicians regarding imperial centers, NATO or uh, liberal ep- economic order uh, and right-wing politics. But it was possible to forget all this uh, with a tremendous PR effort. Uh, so it's no secret that Koch family, uh, uh, one of the Turkey's uh, most powerful capitalist families, has a strong hand, hand uh, here. Anyway, with the uh, last elections, it seems that uh, Turkey entered a long period of election for years. Uh, we can say that this election offers signs of how the transition to the post Erdogan uh, period will be achieved. In one of the most unexciting elections in its history, Turkey, Turkey has come a long way in transitioning to uh, the post Erdogan period. I think uh, this is a blessing for the capitalist class. Big bosses gained the opportunity for a major political change with an election in which the masses did not mobilize at all and the working class did not show their power. So to put it first, we we can say that the current picture is a shift in uh, weights between different actors of bourgeois politics, but this shift is largely taking place within the boundaries of the game. Uh, established by the capitalist class and, in fact, happening quite calmly. Uh, of course, we also have things to do here. In a country like Turkey, no major changes without risks and crisis. Uh, and, of course, there will be some opportunities for uh, revolutionaries too. But uh, our primary duty today is to warn against the false hopes uh, created by these uh, elections. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I wanted to ask, Anil, you know, many of you are saying that the losses of the AKP is partially a result of anger amongst voters that AKP has not taken firm action against Israel. Uh, how do you see this? And, and also, what can we say about the AKP position regarding Gaza? I think it's, this, is, uh, this one is true. Uh, I said before that uh, the, one of the most important reasons for AKP's election loss was the high cost of living and economics in general, but the Gaza issues uh, very important. In fact, before coming to the Gaza issue, this needs to be understood better, the economy and other stuff, because the AKP's hypocritical attitude in Gaza and its corruption in other, other topics are, uh, I think, part of the same picture. So we started to see this much, uh, this hypocritical attitude uh, much vividly after the earthquake disaster we experienced. You, you all remember that uh, disaster. Uh, after the earthquake in February 2023, the AKP government faced a moral and conscientious questioning by the uh, people of uh, Turkey. The credibility and prestige of the government was greatly damaged. Not only the weaknesses of the government were revealed, but also the large segments of society in Turkey had noted down, so to speak, the corruption and hypocrisy of the government and the religious sects uh, following it. Uh, in fact, their weaknesses were... Uh, here were strong enough to bring down the AKP, but as I said, both the capitalist class and international imperialist centers exploit these weaknesses. Uh, they use these weaknesses to create a, an AKP and Erdogan that are winner in elections, but also controllable by them. Anyway, but um, these weaknesses did not disappear uh, after all. Uh, and as the government of a country with such a difficult economy and uh, the AKP does not have a great opportunities neither on uh, Israel, nor on immigration, nor on distancing itself from the West. Uh, so AKP and Erdogan tried to cover up the weaknesses and facts here with the images. Uh, they took advantage of hostility towards uh, Arabs provoked uh, in Turkey while organizing rallies for Gaza. Uh, this was uh, hypocrisy. Uh, while the while defending Palestine on TV screens, uh, he continued trade with Israel through uh, backdoor in Turkey. Also, some of this trade uh, was used directly against the Palestinians as military equipment, and that, that was just sad. Um, we as TKP uh, were uh, among the first to voice and um, expose this hypocrisy, but of course everyone saw the hypocrisy here. As I said, an attempt was made to create an anti-Arab hostility in Turkey uh, in a very planned way, uh, while massive Palestinian protests were taking place all over the world. One reason why the streets remained so quiet in a country like Turkey was the uh, general lack of energy created by election, but uh, on the other hand was the hostility towards Arabs, uh, AKP, uh, make use of it. But again, as I said, everyone saw the reality and everyone saw the facts. And of course, this created anger among AKP voters. And yet, neither AKP, uh, the ministers, nor Erdogan uh, could provide satisfactory answers uh, to the crit criticisms uh, as well. All of these were used by capitalist class to weaken the AKP and exploit its internal tensions in the last election. Uh, and, uh, for example, this is how it became possible for another party coming from the same Islamist tradition with AKP to become stronger, stronger so-called welfare party. Um, uh, in short, yes, uh, AKP is partially, uh, the losses of AKP is uh, partially a result of anger among voters and AKP uh, definitely took a uh, Hippocratic uh, stand in this uh, Gaza uh, problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and Neil, we are running up against time here, so we're going to have to move on, but we really appreciate okay. you joining us so much, and we will certainly uh, keep coming back to you and keep covering this because this is crucial uh, to all world politics. But thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.